Richard Steele Sir Richard Steele, also known by the pseudonym Isaac Bickerstaff, was born in Dublin in 1672 and passed away on September 1, 1729 in Carmarthen, Wales. Sir Richard Steele was an English essayist, dramatist, journalist and politician known for his role in co-authoring The Tatler and the Spectator with Joseph Addison. His early life included education and military service. Steele's career transitioned from the military to writing, marked by his publication of the moralistic tract The Christian Hero in 1701. His literary reputation began with the comedy The Funeral in 1701. His second marriage to Mary Scarlick, whom he adored, resulted in personal letters revealing his personality. Steele held the role of gazetteer but his literary success began with the tatler in 1709 where he promoted moral values the spectator launched in 1711 was his more successful venture featuring contributions from joseph addison steel style was casual and complemented addison's more polished writing he wrote 251 of the 555 daily numbers steel was involved in various periodicals some politically partisan and he became a prominent Whig journalist in opposition from 1710 to 1714. His later career included political challenges, expulsion from the House of Commons, and appointments under George I. Steele's health deteriorated over time, and he retired to Wales in 1724. His most successful comedy, The Conscious Lovers, contributed to Drury Lane Theatre's prosperity. Steele's legacy is characterized by his emotional, impetuous, and benevolent personality, reflected in a sincere but often financially troubled career. Joseph Addison. Joseph Addison was a prominent English essayist, poet, and dramatist, known for his significant contributions to the periodicals The Tatler and The Spectator, which he co-founded with Richard Steele. His literary career was complemented by government roles during the Whig Party's tenure in power. Addison's journey in literature and politics was shaped by his encounters with notable figures. He spent time in Ireland where he met Jonathan Swift and stayed there for a year. Later, he played a crucial role in forming the Kit Kat Club and renewed his friendship with Richard Steele. In 1709, Steele initiated the publication of The Tatler and Addison became a regular contributor. This collaboration led to the establishment of The Spectator in 1711, initially a daily publication that continued until December 20, 1714, with a brief interruption in 1713 due to the publication of The Guardian. Addison's literary talents extended beyond periodicals. His European tour from 1699 to 1704 allowed him to connect with English diplomats abroad and engage with contemporary European intellectuals. During this time, he traveled through France and Italy, where he wrote remarks on several parts of Italy and the poetic epistle A Letter from Italy. He continued his journey through Austria, the German states, and the Netherlands before returning to England in 1704. In 1707, Addison wrote the libretto for Thomas Clayton's opera, Rosamond, which had an initially disastrous premiere in London. However, in 1713, Addison achieved acclaim with his tragedy, Cato, which received praise from both Whigs and Tories. He followed this success with a comedic play titled The Drama in 1716. While Addison had a diverse literary career, he is primarily remembered as an essayist. His essay writing began casually with his childhood friend Richard Steele starting The Tatler in April 1709. Addison contributed 42 essays to The Tatler while Steele authored 188. Steele acknowledged Addison's essential role, stating, When I had once called him in, I could not subsist without dependence on him. The Tatler ceased publication on January 2, 1711, and was succeeded by The Spectator on March 1 of the same year. Addison's contributions to The Spectator numbered 274 out of a total of 635 essays, while Steele wrote 236. Addison also assisted Steele with The Guardian, which commenced in 1713. One of his most famous quotes include, Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. 
and it can be found in issue 147 of the Tatler. His notable works include A Letter from Italy, A Poem to His Majesty, An Epistle to Dr. Arbuthnot, and Remarks on Several Parts of Italy. The Major Periodicals of Augustan Age The Tatler The Tatler, initiated by Richard Steele in 1709, was a British literary and society journal that ran for two years. It introduced a novel approach to journalism, featuring cultivated essays on contemporary manners. The Tatler's format served as a template for British classics like Addison and Steele's Spectator, Samuel Johnson's Rambler and Idler, and Goldsmith's Citizen of the World. It even influenced essays as late as Charles Lamb and William Hazlitt. Steele and his literary partner Joseph Addison eventually concluded the Tatler to embark on a new venture with The Spectator. The collected issues of The Tatler are often published alongside those of The Spectator. Spectator. The Spectator, founded by Joseph Addison and Richard Steele, was a daily publication in England from 1711 to 1712. Each paper or number was around 2,500 words long, and the original run comprised 555 numbers commencing on March 1, 1711. These papers were later compiled into seven volumes. After a hiatus, The Spectator was revived in 1714 without Steele's involvement, appearing three times a week for six months, and these new papers formed the eighth volume when collected. Eustace Budgel, a cousin of Addison's, and the poet John Hughes also contributed to the publication. In number 10 of The Spectator, Mr. Spectator expressed his intention to enliven morality with wit and to temper wit with morality. The journal garnered a substantial readership because The Spectators was something that every middle-class household with aspirations to looking like its members took literature seriously would want to have. Addison hoped to be remembered for having brought philosophy out of closets and libraries, schools and colleges, to dwell in clubs and assemblies at tea tables and coffee houses. Women were a significant target audience for The Spectator, as it aimed to elevate the level of discourse among women and increase their participation in intellectual and social discussions. It promoted family, marriage and courtesy, aligning with the values of Enlightenment philosophies of the time. Rambler The Rambler was a series of short papers by Samuel Johnson published primarily for the emerging middle class of the 18th century. This rising middle class sought social fluency within aristocratic circles, but lacked the social and intellectual tools for integration. The Rambler was published on Tuesdays and Saturdays from 1750 to 1752 and consisted of 208 articles. Samuel Johnson's work in The Rambler stands as his most consistent and sustained contribution to the English language. While it shared its name with earlier publications like The Spectator and The Tatler, Johnson's periodical set itself apart with a distinctive prose style. Idler The Idler was a series of 103 essays with Samuel Johnson responsible for all but 12, published in the London Weekly Universal Chronicle between 1758 and 1760. It is likely that the Chronicle was established to include the Idler, as it had produced only one issue before the series began and ceased publication upon its completion. Alongside Johnson, other authors contributing to the Idler included Thomas Wharton, Bennett Langton, and Joshua Reynolds. James Boswell, Johnson's biographer, recalled that some of the essays in the Idler were written by Johnson as hastily as an ordinary letter. Johnson himself mentioned that during a visit to Oxford, he composed an essay due for publication the next day within the half hour before the last post was collected. These essays gained such popularity that other publications started reprinting them without permission. Johnson responded by inserting a notice in the Chronicle, threatening to do the same to his competitor's content and donate the proceeds to London's prostitutes. When the idler was later published in book form, Johnson omitted one essay, The Vulture, possibly because its anti-war satire was deemed seditious. He replaced it with an essay on the imprisonment of debtors.